Okay, let's study the variance formula, starting with the simplest case of just two random variables, x and y. Let's go back to our previous example of the brewery sales and creamery sales. So you own two businesses, the brewery and creamery. So you are interested in the total sales from the two businesses you own. What is the variance? What is the total risk of the two businesses you own? This variance formula gives you the answer. So X is the brewery sales and Y is the creamery sales. So X plus Y is the total sales. According to this formula, the variance or the risk of the total sales it's not just is not just the risk of the brewery sales plus the risk of the creamery sales. There is an additional term here, the covariance. This covariance term is often forgotten, but should not be forgotten. And I have a good mnemonic for this. When we were high school, we learned this expansion formula x plus y squared is not just x squared plus y squared, there is another cross term here, 2xy. This variance formula is very much like this expansion formula we are familiar with, especially if you remember the fact that the variance has the second order. Remember, the unit of the variance is the square of the original unit of the random variable. Okay? So this variance formula is very easy to remember. Let's look at some numerical example. Suppose both x and y have variance 15, and suppose also that the covariance is minus 10, then what is the variance of x plus y? Well, it is, according to this formula, it's 15 plus 2 times minus 10 plus 15 equal 10. Okay? Let's generalize this variance formula a little bit by allowing some constant coefficients a and b in front of the random variables x and y. So in this next formula, still x and y the only x and y are the only random variables, a and b are just constant coefficients, like just some numbers, one or two. What is the variance of a times x plus b times y? Well, accordingly, you see some a and b on the left-hand side. Now the variance of x has a squared in front of it, and covariance term has a b in front of it, and so on. A mnemonic again is an expansion formula from our high school what is the square of ax plus by? That's a squared x squared plus 2ab, xy plus b squared, y squared. Okay? If you remember this expansion formula, this variance formula is still easy to remember even if there are some constant coefficients in front of x and y. Let's look at some numerical example. Let's say x and y are the same as above numerical example. So variances and the covariance are the same. Let's say a and b are both 0.5. Then what is the variance of 0.5x plus 0.5y? Well, well, according to this formula, a is 0.5, variance of x is 15. a is 0.5, b is 0.5, covariance is minus 10, b is 0.5 variance of y is 15, so this is equal to 2.5. Okay? A special case is when b is 0. When b is 0, this formula implies that the variance of a times x is equal to a squared times variance of x. It's not, it's not just a times variance of x, a squared times variance of x. Don't forget this a squared. Okay? But what is the intuition of covariance? It looks ugly. 
You see, let's go back to our previous example of you owning two businesses, the brewery and the creamery. If you remember that example, the brewery business and the creamery business share the same fate. If the summer is hot, then both beer and ice cream sell very well. If the summer is chilly, then both businesses perform very poorly. But you can also think of a different example. Instead of brewer and creamery, let's say the two businesses you own are import business and export business. If the British pound appreciates, that's good for import but bad for export. If the British pound depreciates, then that's good for export. So export business very, does very well, but the import business performs very poorly. In other words, sometimes the two businesses you own partially offset each other's performance, and sometimes they have the same fate. In the latter example of owning the import and export businesses, it is very likely that the covariance term is negative, so that the total risk of owning both import and export businesses is actually smaller than the sum of the import risk and export risk because the two businesses partially offset each other's performance. On the other hand, in the former example of the brewer in the creamery, because both businesses have a similar fate, it is very likely that the covariance term is positive. Therefore, the risk, the total risk of owning both the brewer in the creamery is actually larger than the sum of individual risks because they have the same fate. And the total risk is equal to the sum of just individual risks only if the covariance term is zero. In other words, only if the two businesses are uncorrelated. That's the intuition of this covariance term in the variance formula. Now, so far, we had only two random variables, x and y. But what if there are three random variables, x and y and z? What is the variance of ax plus by plus cz, where x and y and z are random variables, and a, b, c are just some, just some numbers, constants? If you have good instinct, you might be able to guess what this variance would look like. It's actually, it actually looks like this. a squared variance of x plus b squared variance of y, so far the same. We have c squared times variance of z because we have cz here. And then we have a bunch of cross terms, covariance terms. We have two ab covariance of x and y. That's the same as in the above formula, but now we have 2bc covariance of y and z plus 2ca covariance of z and x. In the next class, we are going to generalize this variance formula to allow you know, more than two or three random variables. So in general, there can be n random variables. You can own n businesses, and you are interested in the total risk, the variance of the total sales, for example. Okay, we are going to learn that in the next class.